Here we go. One, two, three. RC Pro Am. Here we go. One, two, three. Jordan versus Bird. Here we go. One, two, three. Jackal. Oh. Here we go. One, two, three. Boom. Super C. Oh. F yeah. That is awesome. Ooh. 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 He's making face. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. This is amazing. It is. Oh, one, two, three. Rambo. Oh my God. That's so awesome. I would get so much more excited if it wasn't going to make me cough. Uh, here we go. One, two, three. Boom. Turtles two. Oh, hell. Mother yes. Oh my God. Turtles two. One, two, three. <clears throat> That's backwards. It's a gold back, which means. Doesn't that mean it has like a battery backup or something? Well, let's turn around and see what it is. I'll turn it this way so I don't see. Boom! Baseball stars. This is the greatest baseball game of all time. <gasps> is this really? Did I get a Master System game? Did I get a Master System? I got a. Yeah, this is not a gen. This is a Master System game. <gasps> I haven't had a Master System game in my hands. And I don't know how long. I can't believe I have a master system game. I don't even. I'm so excited right now. It's definitely a master system. I haven't. Seriously, guys, I have not touched a master system game in so long. So long. What is it? Boom! Pro Wrestling! Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We've got BAM! Blades of Steel! Blades of Steel. Absolutely classic, classic hockey game. Here we go. One, two, three, boom! WCW NWO Revenge. This is the best wrestling game on the N64. I don't care what anybody says. Hey everyone, RG with RG Fam Games here with a special video for you today. We are celebrating two years of RG Fam Games and also 200 subscribers. We finally hit the mark, so thank you so much. So, 100 subscribers a year. We take our time. What can we say? <laughs> uh, but no, uh, in all sincerity, thank you so much for all the support and all the new friends that we've made. Uh, over the last uh, two years, it's been amazing watching everyone's videos, uh, sharing our stories, chatting. Um, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. So uh, I wanted to take some time, uh, first and foremost, to say thank you uh, for all your support and, and the friendships. And wanted to just talk to you kind of about the journey for the last two years. Uh, also kind of go over... Um, some of the important games in my collection so far and and kind of talk about where we go from here so uh, we've had some uh some of you have dropped some comments uh when we kind of mentioned i was going to do a two-year video with uh um you know some questions so i'm going to answer some of those um but uh where we started let's start there let's start there with where the channel started when i started the channel uh, as far as retro gaming, I had almost next to nothing. I still had a, a relative amount of um, Xbox 360, PS4, um, Xbox One, and um, you know Series X, some, some mo modern stuff, but I had nothing really for the retro um, games. So. Uh, all my games, you know, had all been sold off in the past, you know, many, many, many moons ago. And um, I just realized how much I, I really wished I had a lot of that stuff. And it's it's maybe it's maybe it's a midlife thing. Um, but you realize how much, you know, kind of that part of your life meant to you. And uh, the fact that, you know, it's harder and harder to find some of the stuff. Um, I've never been a huge collector of almost anything um, because... Um, you know, I don't know. I just uh, never felt the need for to preserve anything. But now I, I, it feels to me like 
important to collect some things that were important, you know. And, um, you know, I, I may not play every game that's on those shelves back there, um, but it's important to have them. I mean, I not only as a kid playing all these games, but also working in the video game retail industry. I mean, I spent many years, many, many years working at GameStop um, as a manager. And um, just it's been, the games have been an important part of my life for, well, like 40 some years now. <laughs> <laughs> so um you know all the way back to the the 2600 so um so it's just been important and i've been it's brought a lot of happiness and joy uh to my life and um you know and my sons we we bond over some of this stuff so as you know but um where we started i i just i, I did a little i did a little little spreadsheet here and um when we started in june of 2021 this is my game count i had zero um sega master system games i only had seven genesis games i had zero sega cd i only had three nintendo games 10 snes games um three ps1 games 25 ps2 games five gamecube games four dreamcast games 19 xbox games and a lot of these I just started collecting like a week or two before the channel started. Um, I got all these NES games um, came in a lot that I got um, with with these GameCube games. Um, but otherwise, I had next to nothing. I mean, I had 76, but PS2 and this these PS2 games were just things I found at thrift stores, you know, for the first couple of weeks I was collecting. So you know what kind of games those were. Those were just, you know, those uh, really low value games. But yeah, so I had 70, 76 games when I started this channel. Um, not counting the modern systems. Um, flash forward to 2023 in June. We now have 535 games in the collection. 676 total games if you count the you know xbox 360 xbox one and ps4 ps3 uh xbox series x i have 676 games altogether. you went from zero to 21 in the master system department seven to 79 zero to four uh and to be fair we just got our sega cd system like what last month uh or two months ago so we just started with that one uh nes went from three to 107 uh, mostly thanks thanks to VGM, Video Games Monthly, and Retro Game Treasure for most of those. Uh, same with uh, Super Nintendo from 10 to 44. That's actually, uh, that didn't go up a whole lot compared to some of the other ones. Not like this one. Um, N64 went from 0 to 32. Uh, PS1 from 3 to 55. PS2 all the way up to 72. 23 GameCube games. 10 Dreamcast games. That one didn't go up very much. I get none of them. I, I don't think I've gotten one in an RGT or VGM box yet. And it's been two years. So uh, Xbox up to 77 and Turbo Graphics 16. I didn't have a system. Never thought I'd ever own a system. Not only do I have a system, I also have 11 games for the system. And those games are becoming harder and harder to find. So uh, there you have it. That's That's where we're at. That's where we've come and gone in two years. So now next year, every year, we can just kind of add to this chart and kind of, you know, see how we grow. So I thought it was kind of cool to, to share that with you. Um, other things. So uh, how am I feeling uh, about the channel so far? Um, you know, I'm incredibly lucky that, um, again, that I've met uh, a lot of you that people want to watch these videos. Um and, and engage in the content, have fun chatting about these games. Um, you know, I, I wish I was better at editing. I wish I could, uh, you know, do uh, put out a lot more content. I uh, like some of the other favorite uh, creators uh, that I like out there. Um, you know, special shout out to the people who make not just the opening, the collection of videos, like a lot of us do, but like, you know, the, the Square Pegs, the John Riggs, the John Hancocks, you know, Metal Jesus, um, you know, Rock Solid Productions, um, you know, the Gaming Off the Grid guys, a lot of those who really, really put a lot of effort into a lot of that extra content uh, that we all enjoy. Uh, special shout out to them because uh, I know how much work goes into that. And I, I wish I had the time and the skill because I, 
my video editing skills are terrible. I have no video, video editing skills really. I can cut and slide a few things and that's about it. Um, but really shout out to those guys um, who really, really uh, make all that content that we enjoy and kind of inspires us to do our, our, our little collection videos, you know? So uh, how am I feeling about the collection? Uh, I am so happy with the collection that I've amassed. I'm so happy about those shelves being full and the fact that I have a lot of games that aren't on the shelves because I don't have room for them, which means I need another shelf already. Uh, I'm proud of those boxes over there and all of all the video content that we've done through them um just a blast even though and i'm going to remind you of this a couple of times through this video is there's still a lot of big main titles that i don't have and i don't know when i say big man i'm not talking about super expensive ones i'm talking about just just there's some some main common titles i don't have in that collection but we'll talk about that here in a little bit um someone asked about the good and bad about collecting you know the only bad thing about collecting in my experience, is just knowing that there are some games I'm never going to have, especially when it comes to games that I used to own and would love to have back, um, but that I'll never own again because they're just too expensive. Um, Ill Bleed's one of them. Ill Bleed for Dreamcast. Again, most people don't even know that that game exists, and a lot of people who do probably don't think it's a great game, but a game that I absolutely love. It's a homage to, to B... Uh, movie b horror movies um it's funny it's quirky it's does not take itself seriously in any way shape or form it was so different than any other survival horror game uh back in the dreamcast days and anything around it so i love that game and it's almost 300 dollars for a game and i just can't justify spending 300 dollars for one game as much as i want i saw it a couple weekends ago i saw it at a store and I had the money to buy it. I just I can't justify as much as as much as I want to. I can't justify that. So, um, you know that's the only that's the only bad side of collecting. Everything else, as long as you are collecting with your in your means and being reasonable, and um, I think it's a it's a great great hobby to to get into. Um, you know, one of the things is someone asked, you know, how much I've money money I've made or lost. Um. I don't keep track of that stuff because one, I don't flip a lot of stuff. I don't do a lot of trading or selling. I initially thought I was going to do that because I had a few games. I had a couple ones early on that I flipped to kind of get me money to, to get me started in the collecting. Like I had an original Resident Evil, like Director's Cut and some other, uh, you know, I sold like a Game Boy Advance player you know, for, uh, for the GameCube, I sold a couple of the, you know, a couple of things that could give me a couple hundred bucks to, um, to get me going. And, you know, I just, I love the collecting aspect of it and I just don't have the talents or the mindset. When I say the mindset, I just, the details, when you watch guys like Phoenix resale, retro Rick, and you see them go to thrift stores, do whatever, do their things and in their mind i mean they have those spreadsheets in their mind you know i mean i know they use their phone sometimes to look up prices and stuff but those guys are so connected to that information and and in i don't have the patience or the time to to dedicate i wish i did like i watch their videos and i watch the, the stuff that they do and it's like and i i am um i am i don't know what the word is just so impressed with their energy in in their their the the go gettingness you know uh, of of what they do and I love it and I love watching them um, even though they're handheld and then I usually get motion sick actually um, <laughs> but I I love the way they go after it I love watching their flips and and and, and things like that it's really impressive I just don't have um, I have massive ADHD in my brain and I that's it's too many numbers and stuff in my head. To, it just when I start thinking about all that stuff, it just, you know, um, it's just not me. Um, so uh, I wouldn't say I lost money because everything I've gotten, I only get things that I want um, outside of, you know, you know, I get things in boxes, um, but that's, you know, something different. And I've been incredibly, incredibly happy overall with the whole Retro Game Treasure Video Games Monthly Um it's just been a joy to have these games sent to you to open up every month 
uh, to share with you all and to watch everyone else uh, open their boxes. Uh, it's been a, a, a true, true joy uh, for sure. So uh, for all of the uh, the channel, shout out again to everyone, you know, um, you know, Drinking Games with Josh, um, you know, the Co-op of Nerds, um, you know, um, Tom and Lacey, Do You Nerd, uh, Captain Algebra, um, um, yeah, Krabby Elmo's Game Room, David B69. I, um, who's the guy I watched today? And I never knew about his channel. And, and I, uh, um, 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 Aggie, Aggie, I wish I, I should probably see him. <laughs> I think I don't remember his old channel. Uh, he just started doing the unboxing a couple of, uh, um, uh, uh, a couple months ago and I watched I didn't know his channel never came up on my feed and today I watched all of his unboxings for the last three months um you know but all you know who you are um I love watching all your videos I love that we all comment on each other's videos uh it's just amazing uh, amazing community um 8-bit glitch um um lame dad um so many o Oazram um um so many <laughs> I, I hate to leave people out because I know there's a lot more that we watch. Um, but, you know, uh, I apologize. Um, I'll make it up for you in, in the next video. Um, but yeah, so um, what are my plans going forward to keep doing what we're doing, um, to keep the collecting, sharing the collection videos? I would very much love to do more. I talk about it a lot. I'd love to do some more streaming. Maybe I'm thinking about a play the collection um type of video stream uh maybe we stream like an hour of all the games we'll just pull them off the shelf and play them an hour maybe do a mini review after an hour obviously that doesn't tell you a whole thing but i i I, I think that would be fun um and also an excuse to just play everything that's on that shelf good or bad and just uh have fun um you know maybe some drunk streams um so i don't know i i, I have ideas and i'd love to do all that um it's just a matter of taking the time out and doing it and not be sidetracked too by a lot of the games that i'm playing too because i do play a lot of modern games too uh which suck up some of my time so yeah i will for curse you right now that is taking up a lot of my time i can't help it i love it um so um now i just want to kind of go over i've been rambling out for well geez 15 minutes um i have a special clips clips video at the end of a lot of clips from the show from uh the channel which you're gonna want to stick around i don't want to make this too long but i do have I, I was trying to pick out my top 10 top 10 games that are most important not best or anything else but most important in my collection i got 13 and when i say 13 13 you'll see all right so uh one of the first uh and i put I, some of these are sets um one of the first ones, and I'm going to go kind of in an order from oldest to newest, I guess. Um, this is from, uh, I got one of these games in uh, one of my first uh, VGM boxes. Um, and then I also have it for the Master System. It's one of my favorite games. And when I say favorite, I just have great memories. I know it's, I know it's not a great game by any means, um, but I spent so much time. And once I figured out how to really play it, uh, it brought so much joy uh, to my life back when I was a, uh, you know, a, a teen in, you know, late elementary, early middle school, uh, and that is Ghostbusters. Um, specifically, playing it on the Master System, I would rent it on the uh, the Nintendo, but the Master System version, um, I did have this and loved, loved, loved this game. I've talked about it before. Um, so one of those things that's very, very important to me um, in, in my gaming history, um, you know, don't sleep on it. And once you figure out how to play it, like once you know like the right things to buy, it actually, it's, it's actually a pretty in-depth game. So um, this one we have, we got in one of the boxes, uh, thanks to Lopez, whoever Lopez is, who, who had this game at one point, um, Super Mario World. Um, I did own Super Mario World. I spent so much time. This is my freshman year in high school when this came out, and when I got my Super Nintendo, and the music in this game, some of my favorite game music of all time. Love this game. Still never beaten it. 
30 some years later. I've never beaten this game. Will I ever? Who knows? Um, I'm not very good at games, by the way. I love them, but I'm not very good at them. Um, uh, the next game, uh, I just talked about this not too recently. Um, I am also an avid sports game guy. Not a lot of us out there, but uh, actually, I mean, there are a lot of us out there. It's not in the collection scene. <laughs> uh, but sports games, the reason they're so cheap generally is because so many people bought them. Um, Baseball Star is such an important game uh, in my life. This, When I saw a game where you could create your own teams, kind of had a management where you can, you know, you had to pay player contract and stuff. Like, it was so in-depth. All the things you could want from a baseball game, and it was so different than anything else out there. I mean, the gameplay was almost just like RBI and, and, and Bad News Baseball. It's almost identical, actually, to gameplay. But the other stuff, the behind-the-scenes... Um, uh, was amazing. Baseball Stars 2, which I don't have yet, but Baseball Stars 2 had different stadiums. Uh, it was so cool. But Baseball Stars, um, to me, um, the best baseball game ever. And I played a lot of baseball games back in those days. I shouldn't say ever because does it compare to MLB The Show? No, it doesn't. But you know what I mean. Uh, the other one, talked about this in the last because I got just got this last week, but uh, RBI Baseball. Um, this game spent so, so much time. This was the first game with major league players in it. And even though my brewers were not in this game, um, the Boston Red Sox were, they were one of my second favorite teams. My favorite player of all time, Ellis Burks was a rookie this year and you had to bring him in off the bench. And if you brought him off the bench, he would probably hit a home run. Um, so, and I just love, loved RBI baseball. So, and the fact that I have a complete inbox, for my collection is amazing. That is, it makes me so happy. Can't even tell you. Um, following that theme, um, two other games, super super important in any sports fan's life is um, Tecmo Super Bowl. And I just realized I don't have the NES version. Why the hell don't I have the NES version? I had the NES version opportunity to buy it once, but I bought this one instead. Same store had complete in box NES and complete in box Super Nintendo, and the Super Nintendo was cheaper, so I was I was on a budget. Okay, um, so I have still have to add that to the collection. So both versions, Genesis, Super Nintendo. This is one of the best football games in the history of the world. Um, you pick up and play. It's arcadey, but it still has all the players. It keeps stats. You can have multiple seasons. Um, the cutscenes, everything about Tecmo Super Bowl. People still play this today. I know there we have there are local tournaments uh, for Super Nintendo in the Milwaukee area, Wisconsin. There are national people are still modding this. They're modding this game and putting uh, modern players in these games. Like there's a huge mod community for Tecmo Super Bowl. It's still being played and it's being played online. These people have leagues that they play online. I know a friend who plays in leagues online today through RetroArch. Pretty crazy. Still being played today. Amazing game. So important to have in my collection. I will have uh, the NES version sometime. But if Retro Game Treasure or Video Games Monthly wants to send it to me, uh, please do. It's not checked off on my box, you know. Uh, and then lastly, I promise, it's the last sports game before we get into the other stuff. Um, but if you like sports games in that era... Y'all know what's coming. Y'all, 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 all know what's coming, right? Right? It's, it's, it's NHL 94. It's, it's, it's the best hockey game. Uh, you know, we'll say of all time just because that's just the words we're using today. <laughs> so, NHL 94, I got every version of it. So, Sega CD, which I got recently, uh, a complete box, every version. So, um, I'm not even a hockey fan. I don't watch hockey, but I played NHL 94. I played it like you wouldn't believe. All my friends played it. Um, it's great arcadey game. So much fun. So much fun. Um, yeah, the one timers, the the sound. Uh, it's iconic. It's iconic. I got all of them. So that collection is complete. Unless there's one I'm not thinking of, but that's the only systems that I know that it came out for. So, all right, that's it for the sports games, I promise. 
say that. I say that, and I just turn my head. There's going to be one more on the list. <laughs> There's going to be one more. Um, getting, I have to get this pile out of the way. I don't have a lot of room here. So um, the other things we've talked about on my channel, I've talked about on my channel a lot, is my love for Koi, the publisher Koi. And when I say Koi, I'm referring to the 8-bit um, and the 8-bit, 16-bit eras. I mean, I still have games from the more modern eras. Um, specifically, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, that game, that series. But we'll get to that. Before we get to that, <laughs> uh, the first one I wanted to make, this is, I'm so ha happy to have these in my collection. Um, but Uncharted Waters, um, got it for both, uh, the Genesis. Uh, pirate RPG game. Um, Pretty straightforward, very cool. There was nothing else. Like it's kind of like I mean, there were Sid Meier's Pirates, um, Pirates Gold, uh, but to me, Uncharted Waters was the best pirate game, and you know, there just wasn't a whole lot like that. So love that Koei had that game out there. Uh, the next one is I've talked about these games a lot. You know how much I love these games. Uh, Aerobiz, Aerobiz Supersonic. Um, these are business simulator games. You run an airline. It's like playing Lemonade Stand, like you, you know, for the Apple IIe. But Lemonade Stand, instead of running Lemonade Stand, you're running uh, an airline. Um, I don't know nothing about airlines, but I like a good menu-based simulator, which is really all this is. You know, uh, you pick what cities you want to fly in and out of, and it's just competing with the different businesses. It's just, just cool. I mean, I don't know. It's I know it sounds lame to a lot of people, and they've never made a game like this since, um, at least not for consoles. <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and I, I just I, I I love I love these games. I know they sound boring. I want to stream them, but then I would be like, I don't think anybody will watch them because they'd be considered uh, so boring. So, um, and then last but not least. Uh, again, these games are so near and dear to to my heart. I, I really, I can't say enough. Um, starting with the first, uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Um, you know, it's basically a Risk. Basically a Risk. Like, just a video game version of Risk where you try to take over China, different provinces. Um, you know, we rent this as a kid. Couldn't figure out what to do because it's, it's pretty complex. I mean, you have to recruit generals and you got to find, you know, you just, it's, it's not as easy, especially with no instructions. It just isn't. It took me a while to figure out how to play this game. But once I did, I was hooked. Um, so Romance of Three Kingdoms. I also do have Romance of Three Kingdoms 3 uh, complete. Uh, very important. This is the first one that had um, Spoils of War where uh, after you defeat somebody, you could get like an item or something, which was pretty cool. Um, like a relic. Um, the big thing that's missing is I don't have Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2. And that's the one that means the most to me. That's the one that I've played the most in my life. That is the one that I need. I had a chance to get a couple weekends ago. I saw a loose copy of it, but I didn't really want a loose copy. I just, I really want it boxed. I had an opportunity to get, get it boxed. Um, I think at, at Midwest Gaming Classic, but then someone else bought it. Before I went, like when I went back, someone else bought it. I need Romance of Three Kingdoms 2 in my collection. I don't have it. I need it. That's the one that means the most to me. Um, but just to show them off, because I have it. I have one. I got three. I've got four. I've got four for the PlayStation. Uh, not a great have before. I also have uh, I also have eight for the PS2. And I also have 11 for the PS2. <laughs> so... Um, like I said, I, I, I'm a fan. There are a few of them that aren't on consoles, um, in the PlayStation general, uh, generation and then since, um, but I just love a good war simulation. It's more than just a war simulation and it's part of it. Um, but all the other things, managing your people, managing your provinces, um, who to promote and who to attack. It's just, um, it's just a really rich strategy series and i love a good strategy game i don't like a lot of the modern strategy games for some reason um outside civ i'm a big civilization fan um but these games to me they were just they were just they were 
me and my friends uh i shouldn't say friends like one i had one other friend who loved these games like i did <laughs> and we would we'd play and sleep over weekends and just get mountain dews and stay up forever because because when you take a turn because you can have as many players as you want in this game i don't say as many you can have like you know 10 15 players but when one person takes a turn like you can be waiting for a while i mean a turn could take 20 minutes if you, depending on how many provinces you have to manage and things like that um so it was just so many so many good times um but that's that all right um the last sports game and I, this is just it's such an important game uh to me and my love for this game and it's also an important game in the gaming history um and if you know you know um espn nfl 2k5 the most important game in history of sports um when i say that um 2k came out swinging they had the better game they had been better than madden for a couple of years they knew they were bad better than madden and they put their money where their mouth was and they put this game out but not only did they put this game out they put it out for 20 bucks they literally extended their middle finger <laughs> to EA. So not only do we have the better game, but we're going to put price at less than half of what your game is. And everybody bought it. And it was greatly reviewed. It plays amazing. This is another one people still play today. And because of this, EA, as you, as you know, bought the NFL exclusive license. So this can never happen again. But it killed the franchise immediately and i hate the nfl for doing that i hate ea even more very sore shot but this game is is so good and i have multiple i have this game for every system i just didn't want to pull them all off the shelf <laughs> and i have multiple copies for some reason for every system um now these last three games three games um or three series uh really even mean more to me than anything that I've brought so far. And I've never really talked about these games a whole lot. So it just kind of just gives you a little bit more insight in, in, into me, I guess. So um, I do a lot of PC gaming. I got into PC gaming uh, when I first started working uh, actually at um, GameStop. Before it was, uh, I, I worked at the first GameStop in Wisconsin. Uh, but before we were GameStop, we were at Funko Land. But I, when I took over the Funko Land, that's when we changed it to GameStop, and we were the first GameStop. Um, but when I did my training, did my training at a, uh, at a Babbage's, and the whole team over at Babbage's was PC gamers. Um, so they got me into to MMOs, to EverQuest. And the first time, especially growing up, and then you're 20-something years old, you've played console games your whole life, the first time you step foot into an online world and you see people doing other things that aren't just NPCs walking their normal routes and you just see kind of chaos of people just going wherever. It was the biggest eye-opening, like, oh my God moment. Like, this, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, so I was big into that. Um, and then when this game came out, Fantasy Star Online for the Dreamcast. It rocked my world all over again. Because now on a console, I was online and I'm seeing people just all over the place running around doing their own thing. And it was amazing. The gameplay in this game is simple. Anybody can pick it up and play it. It is a dungeon crawler. It's basically Diablo. It's a third person Diablo. And why Diablo hasn't made a game like this since? Like Diablo should just take this like uh the 3d dungeon crawling oh, God, so good i mean diablo 4 is amazing but um this game um it meant I, the memories i have of this um i do also have it on on xbox i have it on gamecube too um because it came out after the dreamcast died it had to keep going because it was an amazing experience uh you can actually play this solo it's just you can get past the first boss solo right away um but then in order to even have a chance at future bosses you need to keep leveling yourself up by playing the first the first time just over and over to <laughs> even get to the level where you can solo the other bosses um but it's such a great game it means so much and i feel bad that even for people who haven't played this the experience you can still play it online uh, um there are servers open 
don't know if you can play through the Dreamcast, but you can play it on PC. Uh, Blue Blue Origin, I think was the name, or Blue something. Uh, Blue something was, there's a server out there where you can play it. But um, if you haven't played it, I would, I would, I would recommend you checking it out because you can still find a way to play it. And you can, you can play it offline too. Uh, Xbox, you can play it offline. You can play it offline on the Dreamcast uh, with this version right here. Um, and then GameCube, you can play it offline. Uh, but uh, the memories and just the visceral, what that meant to gaming, to have an online game on a console, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I was sitting there with my Dreamcast controller and then my keyboard in my lap because I had a keyboard plugged in the other one so I could type and then play and then type and then play and then... I, you know, like it, I, it was just a memory that I will never, ever, ever forget. But this game means a lot. And there's a PSO new next generation that exists now. The free-to-play MMO you play on your Xbox. I tried it. It's just not the same. Magic isn't there. Uh, second to last, I just realized that I'm missing a game in this series. And I don't know why I don't have a physical. I have to have a physical copy somewhere. But I don't know where it is. Um, but these games um, mean a lot to me. Um, these games, when they came out, um, and I don't care what anybody says about this, this game is excellent. This game is excellent. Anybody who says otherwise, we'll fight. You want to fight? We'll fight, because this is a great game. Um, the Fable series, uh, again, it wasn't everything he promised, uh, you know, Peter Molyneux po promised it would be, but... Um, the fact that you could go light, go dark, um, that it would change your appearance and, you know, it'd watch you grow up and the world change around you. The gameplay itself was easy and, and just arcadey, um, but the story, the cheeky humor, um, all of a sudden you're working professions, you can buy your own house, you can get married, you can have kids. Um, no other game did that. No other game did the things that these games did at the time, even three, especially three, that you could you could marry somebody, uh, another real world player, have kids with them, you know, and it, it's crazy. And I don't even think you could do that in the game today yet still, but you could do it in Fable 3. Um, I just, it takes you to a world and I'll never forget it. And I, I still go back to these games very, very often. Yes, I saw the new trailer for the new Fable. It's not by Peter Molyneux. And it's not by um, Lionhead Studios. So I, I don't know how it's going to be. Um, but these games really, really, truly do mean a whole lot to me. And I don't know where Fable 2 is. Somebody send me Fable 2 if I don't have it. Um, last but not least, um, then thank you if you made it this long in the video. I know my it's super long. Uh, this game series is my favorite game series of all time. It, it tops Fable. It tops Romance of Three Kingdoms. It tops Fantasy Star Online. If I ever get another tattoo, I would get a whole... Um, I, I, might, I might get it someday. I would get a whole sleeve um, dedicated to this game. Um, and that... Is, is is Mass Effect. I have, I have the steel box too. I'm just showing you these because I didn't want to pull out all the other versions. I've got it for PS3. I've got it for Xbox 360. Obviously, I've got these, uh, the Legendary Editions. Uh, I didn't even open the Xbox one because it's on Game Pass, so I have, <laughs> I have it for everything. Um, but um, Mass Effect is the, to me, the most amazing story that any game, especially any sci-fi game, has ever had. It's better than any sci-fi movie. To me, Mass Effect is better than any Star Wars or any Star Trek or any of that. Um, the story, the fact that you make the choices, that there's so many different ways to play, and you can, you can play it so many different times and have so many different experiences every time. Whether you're romancing different characters, whether you're going Paragon, whether you're going Renegade, there's just in infinite amount of ways to play that game the order in which you do missions can matter there's just so many things that if you don't do you know the dlc or you don't do other it's just everyone has a different experience and there's something especially special 
about the first time you play it. The fact that you play as a male character or then you play a female character. And the Fem Shep and the Male Shep are two very different experiences. They're the same game, but they're different experiences. And they're both great. They're both great characters, no matter what way you play them. No game has ever done that. No game still has ever done that. You know? Um, we won't talk about Andromeda because that's a piece of shit. But everything... <laughs> But these these three games, um, they're so special, um, you know, to me and, and my um, gaming history. Much my love of sci-fi, my love of storytelling, um, just nothing, nothing combats it. So, if you have time and you have not played these this series, get the legendary edition. It's available for all the consoles. It just makes it so easy for you, and play it, and then probably play it again right afterwards and do things a little bit differently because you're going to miss out on so much. Um, or if you don't have the time, just go watch somebody play it because there's so many people on YouTube who have played it and have their videos played through. Um, I can't recommend it enough. So uh, again, thank you for letting me share um, all these franchises and games, which are the most important to me. And there's so many I don't have. Look, um, these are what's in my collection. What I don't have, I still don't have Mario 3. Mario 3 is one of the greatest games in the history of the world, and that would be here. That would be here, but I don't own it. Contra. I don't own Contra. I have Super C, but I don't have Contra. Contra would be in this pile if I had it. I don't have it. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out would be in this pile if I had it. I don't have it. Ransom of Three Kingdoms 2 would be here. I don't have it. Um, so there are so many games that I still don't have, even those, which are all pretty common games and not necessarily expensive, but, and the reason I haven't bought them is because I, I'm just hoping somebody will get them in a box, <laughs> you know, I can easily go out and buy them, right? Um, and I've seen them, you know, at every store and convention, but I, I, I'm waiting for that reaction so I can open the box and have my reaction that a lot of you guys like, so, um, but there's a lot of that. So also... Uh, I have a little treat for you. If you can stand watching this video any longer, I have a little clip that's going to happen right here shortly. And you can see all the fun kind of highlights of the channel over the last two years. So um, thank you again. If you watch this whole thing, thank you. God bless your soul. Thank, thank you for all the um, the conversations and the joy of watching your videos. Um, thanks for the likes, the comments, the subscribes. Keep doing it. Maybe we can get to 300 now. And, um, you know, if there's anything uh, you want to see me do a video on, shoot me a message. You know, I, I, anytime people ask for something, if they ask for it, I'll do it. Um, but if they don't ask for it, then, you know, I'll probably won't think of it. But, um, again, thank you so much. It's been an amazing two years. Again, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Here's the highlight reel, and we'll see you next video. Bye. This was the um, impulse on top of the impulse. Um, so this person who traded in all of their stuff, uh, they also traded in or sold their system. So I bought their system and now have a master system again. I haven't had a master system. As you know, we've talked about this in previous episodes um, since uh, since the 80s, maybe 1990, no, the 80s, uh, there was one for sale, and I messaged it, and it was from, it was posted like a week ago, and I messaged him at midnight last night, I said, you know, is this still available, and I woke up to the amazing message that, yes, it was available, and I am now the proud owner of a TurboGrafx-16. And he got Silent Hill at Goodwill. It, I, it, this is the greatest hits version. It, the green is my green screen. Uh, greatest hits version of of Silent Hill. He got it at a thrift store at a Goodwill in Milwaukee. It's 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 some complete. Um, there are some cracks. And went to another thrift store. Somewhere on the south side of Milwaukee, um, similar to when he came back with Silent Hill, and he came back with 
three games that I'm still I'm still in shock. So um, he paid two dollars and eighty eight cents for each one of these three games. First game. The greatest hits version of Chrono Cross. It is complete in box. It's great shape. Beautiful. Verify the price sticker. See $2.88 for Chrono Cross. So this version goes for about 20 bucks. Um, so really, really great find, right? Great find. It's awesome. I was like, oh my god, we got Chrono Cross. It's so cool. So cool. And then he goes, but wait, I got another one. You got another one? He said, yes. He made me close my eyes and hold out my hand. And then he pulls out this. Your original Final Fantasy VII. Again, $2.88. It is complete. Final Fantasy VII, one of the greatest RPGs ever. Um, this one sells, I think it's about 30 bucks or so. So pretty good for $2.88. Um, and it's like, oh my gosh, like... Again, I was super, super happy with the Chrono Cross, and then, you know, couldn't believe that. Why is this not closing? Um, because it's not in the right thing. There we go. Um, so I thought, psh, I mean, the Chrono Cross was enough, and the Final Fantasy VII that was even cooler. But it's like, wow, that's that's a hell of a find at a Saint Vinny's. And then, Brave Fencer Mus Musashi, um, $2.88, St. Vincent de Paul, it's complete, it's got the Final Fantasy VIII uh, demo disc in there, there you go, this is selling for about $120. And he got it for two dollars and eighty eight cents at a thrift store. Uh, uh, how how does this happen? 